yeah. straight away uh, we go into the yeah situation. yeah so what, what what more to your McDonald's cheat codes can you add uh? yeah so, yeah so I mean we the, that's the usual cheat code right when you order McDonald's go for the no no salt so my friend fries was, with no salt yeah so fries make it fresh for you yes correct. then you ask them for salt then you add your yes salt. correct okay. so my friend was uh, telling me this uh, it's a old cheat code right yeah 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 he yeah, said right. oh, fries no salt no yes. salt yeah cheat code and I say this cheat code very old already okay it's an older code sir but it checks out so when the fries came, my one, which was not modified in any sort of way, was hotter than his. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. But luck of the draw. Lah. Yeah. So, so you got the the standard uh, normal, fries. The normal your, fries. Your friend got the modded fries. Yes. And your fries were hotter than his. Yes, correct. He got the, the salt he did, but didn't work. Wow. So, so you see all these old tricks, huh? They also want anymore. to you. Maybe the auntie also like, wow, well, I'm fed up already. Yeah. And then, then she knows the game, right? Yeah. She <laughs> so knows like, the game. Uh, they know so the she game. Knows, okay, this fella, uh, this you want fella. to tell <laughs> him. Then, they, exactly. then he sets the, the, the unsalted fries. Exactly. Inside. Then go and make another batch of uh, yeah. fries for you. Because if you think about it, if someone shouldn't be eating salt, then he shouldn't be eating McDonald's. So Can if you even order, right? Fries extra crispy. Cannot. Oh. So they can't leave it in the... What, what happens if you leave the fries in the hopper longer than the prescribed time? I want? No idea, man. Spontaneous yeah. combustion. I mean, obviously, too long is come to a point where the whole oh, thing yeah. is just burnt. Yeah, uh, right? yeah, yeah. But I'm sure there's like a... You're still in a sweet spot if you left it in there in an extra two minutes, for is example. I, I don't know. I, mean, I don't know, man. It, it could, after the timer goes off, right? And like five seconds later, uh, boom. Maybe, yeah. Maybe you need to work at the McDonald's margin is that... I actually thought about it. Yeah, one do you time. Know, cheat code. Do you, okay, obviously we are in different generations. Right? Yeah. But, but my time in the primary school days, right, I remember there was one time, I think it was like, well, primary four or whatever. Okay. They organized a field trip, right, to McDonald's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had and this then they yeah. did the kitchen tour yep. and they show you how things are made yep. and then the walk-in uh, uh, freezer mm. and all that. And of course, the, the gag is like you go inside the freezer, then the fella close the door, mm. switch off the light for about five seconds and freak everybody out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But was it, was I it? was so interested, right, in knowing how the hell they always got the fries perfect, right? What Because you, you, you buy the fries and then you go home, then no matter what you did to it to heat it up or toast it or whatever, it would never be the same again, right? Yeah. So I was so interested in figuring out how do they get that fries just right every time you 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 eat there that that day of the um of the field trip right was like the last day of school or almost towards the end of the school term just before just after exams just before holiday and all that right my dad had planned a family trip as he usually does a lot a drive to Thailand or Malaysia or somewhere like that. I think it was, yeah, Malaysia. Wow. Right? Thailand or Malaysia, right? Like, yeah, yeah, he, yeah. Every holiday, dude. Ah. Every holiday, he drive to uh, Thailand for holiday. Nice. Right. So, this one, yeah, I remember, why I remembered was because I wanted to go for that field trip so bad that mm. I didn't even want to go on a holiday. Wow. And I tried to talk my dad into delaying that, 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 the start date of the holiday by mm. a day or so, just so I can go for this field trip, right? And then what eventually he did was this, all right, this is what I do. And this is where I found out the first time there was a thing uh, about it. He Not only he let me go for the field trip, after that, right, um, he arranged for my grandfather or whatever to take me straight to the airport and then fly me to Penang. I flew to Penang on my own mm. and then met him there, joined the family for the rest of the trip. Wow. Yeah. And, and then they have this thing where if you are a child, if you are... You have a unaccompanied passenger kind of status. So, uh, your guardian, which would be my grandfather at that time, uh, would walk me to the airport, check in, then someone from the airline would mm. escort me basically all the way to the plane. And yeah, I've seen thing. that before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I didn't know this thing existed up until this 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 incident, lah. This, this and you were like in primary six. I was about primary four, or something like that. Oh, okay. yeah, younger than that, right? And then I think I was a flight to. Penang or KL wasn't mm. wasn't a long flight and all that, but I was so because you're only a few hours behind your family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and I was so sort of kiasu about the trip, and I didn't know. Then I thought like, 
Wow, oh, those days, okay, no smartphones, no in-flight movies, mm. anything, right? I said, wow, I better bring reading material. So I brought like a whole stack of Archie comics. Wow. I didn't even, the flight was so short, uh, I didn't even finish the one <laughs> Archie comic uh, by the time we landed again. Uh, yeah. Nice. What's the, what's the purpose of the tour to like, you know, tell all the kids, like, see, if you don't study, right, then you need to get very familiar with all of this. Uh, no, 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 no. So I, I don't know what the purpose of the tour was. But to me, it was a fact-finding mission that mm. how did they make the fries? That, that, that's what I all wanted to know. I, ju- I just caught up to and what then, you just said. If you don't study, then this is... You, this will you be your life. Wow. But at that age, <laughs> working at McDonald's seems... That's like terrible, a John. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it didn't seem like a bad place to... Yeah, it's not bad, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. So, for, anyway, the secret I found out was after seven minutes, they just trash the fries and then start another batch again. Mm. That's all. So, it's always no longer than seven minutes old. Yeah. So, if you just listened in, uh, sorry, we started the, the, the conversation before time. Welcome to podcast. Oh, this is part of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is it. That's the it. hard... They call it a hard open. Oh, right? really? Like, like Star Wars, right? Cold open. The first... Mean? Cold open. Cold open or hard open? Cold open. Cold open. Okay, you just heard the voice of uh, Sean Lu, who's just joined the team uh, this week, in fact. So, you know, in my whole line of like 20 plus years of motoring journalism, right? I probably had my first celebrity... I'm using inverted quotes here. Mm-hmm. Uh moment today mm. just before coming in here uh-huh. yeah. so to cut a long story short I went to the Apple store at um, Changi Jewel mm. right um, because it's the closest to our office Yeah, I bought a Apple TV thing for my home mm-hmm. okay? and then the guy goes to say I like an Apple TV and all that and he conjures up suddenly an Apple TV unit appears and all that and then he goes uh, do you have a business account with us and uh, mm. you know blah 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 and as a matter of fact we do right so I pull up my phone to show him the QR code with the business card and all. so on the QR code there's my name and the company name there so I just put it down on the table and say ah there so he reads his name he goes oh Sheldon Trollope <laughs> oh <laughs> you, you're the guy that so I said, I he just had an orgasm. He, he, just, he, he, just, he just did this. So he self-talk. could have been, been imitating holding a steering wheel or me milking cows or what. Yeah. yeah but, but, you know. But he recognized your name. So I'm like, oh, how you know? Why, why, why would you think that he would associate your name with milking cows? I don't know. It might be a possibility. It could know? be a side hustle that yeah. he has not <laughs> introduced us to it yet. Well, I, so he, he recognized you did? Not that, that I like, have any problem with milking cows, but I wouldn't know where to begin nice. in Singapore. Uh, but did he remember where he remembered your name? Ah, I don't know. He like, cannot like, remember. Oh, right. or he couldn't even verbalize. Okay. <laughs> you know, I, I said, oh. He was you, awestruck. You're the, yeah. you're the guy that... I'm like... Uh, um, <laughs> Like, yes, lah. Yeah. <laughs> I said, are you a car guy? Uh, used to be. I don't drive anymore. Like, oh. Okay. So, <laughs> you can still be a car. Enough, you can be a car guy still, and not drive. Yeah, you don't I, have to own yeah, a car. I guess, but, but it sort of was that. that oh, suddenly, all my 20 years of, of writing and all that has come to that. Like, <laughs> that's all. Yeah, yeah. Did he give you a discount? If he was an employee, they, they can't, yeah. you know, if, if I did get a discount, it would have been through that business thing and yeah. it's out of his control anyway. But, you know, I, I just thought it was, you know, kind of, kind of made my day in a way, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I remember telling you that, that I grew up reading your stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're the first guy to tell me. That, really? Uh, All well, right. first person in the industry. Oh, okay. To tell me that I had a direct influence on, yeah, yeah, on yeah, yeah, your... Yeah career path yeah uh, so apologies to you and your family for that yeah unfortunate very <laughs> unfortunate yeah but but it's true I, I didn't mean to set you down the wrong path <laughs> also because your name is very unique so I think it, it sort of sticks in a, in mm. my mind at I least. suppose la. yeah okay alright Okay. so it's not my um, writing thing nah. <laughs> I just happened to be born in, uh, I mean, when I was younger, reading, I, I don't understand writing talent, really. It's just, oh, oh car stuff. Thanks. I'm going to read car stuff. Yeah. Photos. 
You know, <laughs> that's about it. Uh. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, like people like Srijit, you know, in full, like, opposite. Oh, milking cow. one cow. Yeah, milking <laughs> a cow in a lotus. In anger. S1. In anger, yes. <laughs> yeah. You see this dude, you no. Know. All right. And Sean, uh, you were telling me also you are exactly half my age. Uh, oh. And, 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 and uh, you told me the magazines that you uh, grew up reading were? Yeah, uh, Evo and Top Gear Singapore. So, wow. similar path. Oh, I, where it was. my dad didn't buy me magazines. So, unfortunately, I only read Highway Magazine because it was free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, so, luckily, yeah, I yeah, was in all three of them. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> for, for my case, it was, you know, when your dad pumps petrol at the station, yeah. you just slip a magazine in. It's like, oh, yeah. is it? No, that's not going to happen. Just as he's <laughs> paying for stuff, then you... Yeah, like, just like quietly... Yeah. <laughs> also in there, it's like, yeah, okay, oh, okay let's okay. get this. Yeah. But similar, like, I didn't really check. Like, I couldn't really read the chim words that he yeah. was mentioning. So it was just like, oh, <laughs> wow, this car people yeah, are yeah, nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, so my writing is too chim for you. La. Yeah. I mean, Prob- for, for the age la, at the time. I mean, for oh, me, yeah. the most exciting part is the highway magazine at the back. You They used to list the, the prices of cars. Mm. Mm-hmm. So that was that was the other exciting part. Aside from seeing Sheldon's name. La. It was mm. the price guide, right? <laughs> the price guide. <laughs> price guide is fine, except that we found after a while, right? Yeah. It became a bit redundant when the two week COE cycle thing was coming. Yeah. Because the minute, by the time you get the magazine, the prices had changed already. Yeah. And mm. and, and at that time, we were expect, experiencing some big fluctuations in COE prices, which of course impacted the thing. Yeah. So we'd have complaints like um, uh, customers going to the showroom of some car saying, hey, the price here says you are selling it for, you know, so many thousand dollars, but now your price is like 12K, 15K higher. I want you to match this price, that kind of thing. We were yeah. getting those kind of complaints, which was no fault of ours, obviously, because we can only print what's the latest prices. And, if, yeah. you know, and then, of course, nobody reads that disclaimer the, <laughs> uh, in fine print that says we are not responsible for any fluctuation. And anyone with two brain cells to rub together can... <laughs> Should be able to fathom that, right? But no, this was, uh, yeah, something also that became our problem. So eventually, uh, we we just decided to do without those pages, and those were like what six or eight pages of otherwise stuff we could have given you more content on more test drives or mm. more features or stuff like that. So after a while, we weeded those out, and it was crazy because you had to also update, you know, like. Literally, maybe a hundred plus car yeah. prices. You had like what twenty to thirty brands, and then within each brand, you easily had more than a dozen models. Especially when it came to like the Mercedes and BMWs, mm. and you know you have so many variants yeah. within within that thing. And then the prices all had to be manually entered on the specs and all that. So it was a pretty onerous task, mm. and a thankless one at that at the end, right? Until today when uh, someone like Idris tells me he enjoyed reading that part. Thank you, Sheldon. (laughs) (laughs) See, if you reached out to me earlier, then we would have kept it going because there's no talent needed, no no skill needed other than to just read a price list and input those numbers in, right? I mean, back then, that was the, the easiest indication of how much a car was. Yeah, worth yeah. right how much it costs and people would archive it internet. they put it on the shelves and then you know you could yeah. go back a year before they say hey last year this car was this much yeah. and today it's this much yeah and I like looking at the top speeds so, so that was oh yes ah, yeah, yeah. All so the between the, trumps, right? yeah. the Corolla and the the Sunnies yeah you know that every single um, uh, edition of the magazine mm. I would see oh yes Sunny is a bit faster than <laughs> So my dad bought the correct car. All right. <laughs> that kind of thing, yeah. I mean, were you involved in that decision that if he was looking for a car, would you try to kind of nudge him? Or mm, that, that I think or, when I was younger... Going two seconds faster. No? I mean, <laughs> I don't remember doing that, la, but I, it was a long time ago. So it was... I mean, I was young, la, so there was no way, aside from the magazines, there wasn't any other distinction I could make between what car is better because of course I couldn't drive right. too young yep. but um, yeah I remember seeing the, uh, the, all those uh, price lists and seeing which car was faster which one was faster from 0 to 100 uh, that was somewhat and a very exciting thing as a 
very young boy. Uh. And do you play uh, top drums? Anyone? No. I have cards. collected the cards. I but you never played how it, to uh. play. You don't know how to play top drums. Yeah, I mean, I could be. I'm wow. What's top drums? <laughs> you don't even know what top drums. Oh my I'm god! I'm just giving you shit, lah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I mean, the games we play, Grand Turismo, uh, top drums. <laughs> yes, oh, exactly. Yeah. 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 Need for zero generation. Yeah. yeah Cigar, Cigar, okay, my Cigar time, Rally. no Grand yeah. Turismo, yeah. no any Turismo. Mm. But yeah, these top trump cards, and 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 you know, you took them as gospel truth. But clearly, later years, you look at those. Uh, um, Specs, right? They had like acceleration, yeah. engine, and all that. Uh, some of them, like, just numbers pull out of thin air. Mm. No? <laughs> mm. But I think it would be fun to play around on top trumps, basically, and you're just comparing specs. And you know, oh, yours got four cylinders, mine has eight cylinders. And yeah. Then I win, mean, and that kind of thing. It's a very, I mean, in the all the, when it comes to that family car segment, definitely in terms of coffee shop. Talk between uncles is all about Passengers. four wheel disc brakes and and twin cams. Actually, we should make our own top trumps, right? We've cast to today and gone sale. Is it? To, mm. to be fair, right? Top yeah. trumps was quite popular because as a kid, that was one of the only few things you could afford. Mm. Yeah, okay, I suppose back in the or like more, suppose, yeah. East, somewhere right? out there, there's a company that owns the trademark top trumps. So we, we if we created our own version, of, we we cannot call call it top trumps, right? So what 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 name would you um, volunteer to call this? Yeah, also, because game, the, the word Trump has got not very not nice. Not so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't call it top Biden either. <laughs> <laughs> oh no no, that's my uh, yeah. That's that's clapping. Yeah yeah. Oh sorry, oh. that's my phone. Sorry. I said... Hey what? Okay. Sorry. Yeah, Rabak we got a new sir. board, lah. So yes, we'll be right back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's the one. Finally, okay, okay, okay. I have to label this. Uh, you have to turn turn it off. Or, or just like <laughs> reframe it. Even use it. No, no, I can't. It's, it's too strong. It's 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 calling to me. Yeah. And, uh, the sound effects board. Yeah. So anyway, um, I guess um, Idris, you you're telling me. Uh, you won't be around for the rest of September because you're about to embark on a yeah on a journey yeah pretty much adventure. So yeah. in a couple of days, I'll ride up to all the way to Chiang Mai. Ooh. Uh, so I'll be there. I mean, I'm not setting a date as to when I'm coming back. So don't know when you'll be back again. No idea. Yeah. So yeah. there's a chance that you might just stay there forever. Depending. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No la. Of course not. <laughs> just, just don't go exploring any um caves la. You know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. I don't like that kind of stuff. I will oh, stay yeah? on the road okay, mainly. Okay. I won't even go off roading and stuff. I just I'll saw this fed. this movie uh, yesterday about the, it's called Thirteen Lives about yeah. the, the Thai boys who were uh, trapped in the cave. Yeah. So Ron Howard uh, from Apollo Thirteen, you know, he's made a movie mm. out of it. Uh, pretty interesting, but felt a bit low budget for a Ron Howard kind of. <laughs> Uh. Production. I mean, he made Rush, right? Which yeah. was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And then he's got um, Vigo Mortensen and uh, Colin Farrell, mm-hmm. who, is, who, by the way, look very Arctic. Very, uh, <laughs> I, maybe it was intentional. Probably. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I would say that. But yeah, this is interesting. But mm. now that the next day you tell me you're riding to. Uh, yeah. Well, Chiang Rai is where this thing happened. Yeah. I'm going to Chiang Mai and then I will do the whole Mei Hong Son loop. So we will take you to Chiang Rai. Chiang Rai, yes, yes. So you, what what is the Mei Hong Son route? It's basically B roads that link be, between mm. Chiang Mai, Chiang Rai, and Thak. I think. Is so, would you account? consider, for example, like, oh, since I'm here already, can I ride into Laos, Laos, or Cambodia, yeah. and Vietnam, and you can, but the going. paperwork in doing that is is a bit leche. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah. If you want to go to Lao, it. you need to go to the embassy first and then sh- give all your documents and stuff. To me, I'm not really looking to write into Lao yet. Maybe next time. Okay. But it is indeed possible. I know you can't write into Myanmar. Myanmar. Yeah, Myanmar is tough. So, yeah. so, so, um, yeah. My dad has also driven to Vietnam. Mm. I think he went via. Uh, Laos yeah. side and then yeah that yeah. way is, is easier it's easier yeah you could even drive into China yeah. Mm. yeah yeah. 
So I will be reaching a town called Thang. And I think at that town, you can see the Myanmar Friendship Bridge or something like that, which okay. crosses between Thailand and, and Myanmar, if I'm not wrong. Mm. So, uh, but I'm not going to cross it. So mm. just going to stay in Thailand. Right. Yeah, so should be fun. Yeah, should be fun. So your your dad is very oh, used to driving up and down. Since I was like five years old. Nice. Like when on like the first AA auto venture ah. in Thailand. You know, and I was part of, obviously, went along with him. Mm. And then he got bitten by the bug and every school holiday, uh, like three, four times a year, he would start organizing his own trips and nice. his own groups of friends and all that. So I guess that's where that passion for cars came in. Right. Spent mm. a lot of time. Most of my childhood during the holidays, I couldn't remember spending endless hours uh, in a car. Mm. And, yeah. And then the, the driving and all that kind of thing. So it's something that, that, that it's sort of very natural to me. And by the time... By the time I started doing my national service about 18, I had made like easily 30, 40 trips to Thailand already. Fantastic. Wow. Yeah, yeah that's amazing, man. To the point now where I don't feel any desire to <laughs> go to Thailand because I feel I'm still rather have that time exploring other parts of the world, which yeah. I haven't been yet. Nice. Yeah, yeah 30 or 40 times. But Some people don't do that. No lifetimes at all. Nobody needs to go that many times. <laughs> yeah, to be very honest. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. So you you name it, I've been to that part of Thailand. Mm. Yeah. But mm. uh, yeah, some some drives are nice. Uh, mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have Have any of you driven to Thailand or? Mm. I hope not, not all the no. way up. La. I've been to the border though. To the border. Yeah, yeah. I've been to Changlun before and you turn back. Yeah. Okay. Never crossed it. Mm, because the nice. paperwork is not as easy, you see. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, so it's not like going to Malaysia exactly. and you stay in your car and yeah. I imagine it might change a bit now, but I remember back in the day, you have to literally it's like a hour long process yeah. and then you get out of your car, you walk to one building, yeah. get something stamped and you know, forms in triplicate and whatever, and then walk to another building on another side. And then get something else stamped and then, yeah. Yeah, it's still the same. It's still like that. Uh. Yeah, it's still the same. Yeah, yeah. At least I think when it comes to passports, when settling the passport control, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's you. It's now you can pass there, it there's over. There's a building that you yeah. go to get then your passport stamped. Yeah. And then there's another building that you go to get your car or vehicle paperwork yes. uh, stamped and verified. Because I guess they, that they don't want a situation where we smuggle our cars in or smuggle yeah. cars out either way yeah and, mm. you know so so there's there's vin numbers and everything that yeah. needs to be uh verified that you you are driving and coming back in the same yeah. car and, uh, correct i think there's a deposit that used to be made like a guarantor or something mm. like, that. like if you don't return from this checkpoint in in x number of weeks or days then uh, they're gonna forfeit your deposit or claim against it. Right. I think I've heard about that before, but yes, the, the same still, thing still applies still today. Applies, yeah? I think only when traffic is bad, then you just hand over your passport or something like that mm -hmm. at the counter. Mm -hmm. But you still need to park somewhere to get your conveyance forms sorted. Okay. And the issue is you need to own the car. It's much easier. Mm. Yeah, you yeah, don't yeah. own the car, you need certified through Ooh, copy. Yes, you need yes, yes. Um, yep. authorization letters. Yep. So it's a bit leche. La. But still, it's very possible to, to cross the border. Right. So it sounds like you've done your homework already. Yeah, man. Uh, okay. Yeah, good, just, good. you know, asking a lot of people back and forth, back and forth. And then looks like I have heavy at the back of my head. So should be good. But my friend, is he's done it before. Okay. So that's always easy. Like, yeah. So for him, that's it's always like, the thing of yeah. just follow someone who's done it before. Yeah. yeah. And for him, it's like, he also says, I don't really remember, but we just follow. Like, just see where to See park. what they yeah. tell you to do. And yeah. then you do. Like. Exactly. So do you have a rough uh, itinerary or a schedule of, Besides ending up in, in, in Chiang Mai, so along yeah. on route, where, where are your yeah. so points are you going to stop? First off, I mm -hmm. thing is I can do about 1,000 kilometers on a motorcycle mm -hmm. a day, okay. but my friend can do about 400. He's more comfortable with 400 kilometers, four to 500. Uh -huh. Then he feels a bit tired. Mm -hmm. And so I say, okay, I follow your pace. Mm -hmm. And then 
first stop is Ipoh. Mm-hmm. Literally, we're just going to turn off, mm-hmm. park the, the bikes and then head mm-hmm. to the hotel. Mm-hmm. And then next day we get up. That's the day when we sort out our insurance paperwork, mm. uh, the conveyance forms and all that. Mm-hmm. So one thing I think a lot of people know is that there are border towns like mm. Changlun, which will settle everything for you. Just turn up with at least your lock card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they'll do everything. So, yeah. Yeah. So including insurance. So when we do that, the mm. next day, mm. that's when we will cross the border and head to Hat Yai. Mm-hmm. And from Hat Yai to Hua Hin. So you just, staying a night in Hat Yai? Yeah, staying a night in right. Hat Yai. Okay. And then the next day is Hua Hin. Mm-hmm. Um, after Hua Hin, we are going to skip Bangkok and mm-hmm. go to Nakun Sawan, which okay. is just up north from Bangkok. Okay. Again, one more night. And then that next night is when, the next day after Nakun Sawan is when we get to Tak. Mm. Or depending if we want to go all the way to Chiang Mai first and then start from Chiang Mai, go the whole Mei Hong Son loop yep, yep. and then get the certs and all wow. that, mm. you know, just so you know, just show people, hey, I did the right, right. 1,864 yeah. corners. So you're going to get uh, like your license plate in Thai? Uh, no, I, I don't think I'll do that. Yeah. <laughs> Although if <laughs> I'm very bored, then maybe I'll do it. Okay, but okay. Um, yeah. to me, it's not necessary anyway. Yeah. Yeah. But, I know, I know. But, but it, it is a, like, you know, it's... Badge of honor, like yeah, I've been there. Exactly, kind of thing, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, if, if really... I'm not going out of my way to do it, but if right. I see it like where I'm wrestling or what, yeah. It literally has to fall on your lap. To yes, to, correct. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I'm not going to put the plate. La, and it's not necessary. I know. But uh, after that, that's once we're done, mm. that's when we ride back most likely the same way. But depending on situations, we might take a train all the way to Bangkok. Mm. And then take but you can put your bikes on the train. Yeah, you can. Oh, yeah. Okay. They stopped it for a while. Oh. So um, previous... But that's a bit like cheating, right? I mean, not that I blame you. I mean, I, it's not cheating. I because, totally do it. Yeah. yeah like, <laughs> you've already done the trip up and then we're not planning to visit any other place. Oh, I do it both ways. Like, yeah. I put my bike on a yeah. train. But there are a lot of people who do that. Yeah, they get on the train in Bangkok yeah. and then they go all the way to Chiang Mai. Yeah. yeah. And, just and they sit the on the part. train. Yeah. How do you... Obviously, I'm not a bike rider, but when driving on, you know, north-south highway, mm. middle of the afternoon, somewhere like one, two o'clock, the sun is at its hottest and yeah. just beating down on you. And you see these poor guys on these bikes, mm. you know, just no protection from the sun other than the helmet and the thing. That, that, that heat must be, like, oppressive. How, how do you deal with it? What does oh. it feel like? I don't know. For me, I'm okay. I'm, You're okay. I'm There's okay a few with the heat. Yeah, it's not bad. Okay. Um, because the wind helps. The wind yeah. helps with the cooling, but I'm not going in a t-shirt on the highway, lah. That's for sure. Okay. So, yeah, you're riding. I guess. Yeah, just proper a jacket. Riding yeah, jacket yeah, yeah, riding jacket. Which, which is oh. also hot, right? It doesn't get hot if you get the right get type of jacket. It's not hot. Yeah, uh-huh. you get a mesh jacket meant for um, warm out, weather, hot yeah, weather, summer. It's usually that. in dark colors. It's usually yeah. in like black or yeah. gray yeah. or something. So it's not. Doesn't that absorb the heat? No way. Eh. For me, no way. Eh. Like huh? I can sit on the highway. I've done it a couple of times already. Uh-huh. It's okay. Yeah. It doesn't it's feel like no life sapping. I mean, I've no. Even driving sometimes, John. I'm sure if I mean like middle of the afternoon when it's super hot, like even thirty five degrees, and mm. Thailand gets even yeah, yeah, yeah. still like yeah. forty. Or yes. Like, yeah. Yeah. But that that heat just feels like it comes through the. Even with the aircon on and all that, mm. what, the, the, the glare of the road and yeah. all that, you mm. just feel that energy leaving you. <laughs> so I think yeah. for me, I get that only if I I don't watch what I drink or eat. And then when I get in the car again, uh-huh. that's when I feel the fatigue setting in, you know, everything. If you don't watch what it means... Yeah, so for example, don't... yeah, if I'm doing like, I'm on a bike and going long, uh-huh. I'm not sitting down and having some nice nasi lemak and all that lah. Yeah, that's that's a no no. Yeah, you. That's not a good idea. Yeah, not a good idea because you you basically when you get on the bike, you're you're woozy, man. You're you tired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so uh, too much carbs, right? That, that, yeah, correct. That so sugars. eat light, and then you should be good, lah. Yeah, but and drink again, a lot. You drive. You're in Malaysia, no? You know how much how hard is it to to do that to really not have good food and, uh, and for me I'm okay right? I can do well, it at the destination a, uh, not not when I'm on the way so well, everything is good along the way really? <laughs> especially the nasi lemak it's <laughs> legendary uh. yeah. yeah not so much along the rest stops I suppose right mm. oh, some of the rest stops are best okay. the Ramli burger are you oh Ramli yes yeah, yeah. yeah. 
one particular rest stop, which is the Jajantas Ayer Kero. The one with the is, bridge. Yeah, with the cross. bridge. There's an A&W, right? There's an A&W, correct, in the bridge. Yeah, but yeah, if yeah. you're heading southbound, yeah. or not, it's yeah. on the southbound side. Uh-huh. There is a Nasi Lemak. Yeah, it's across the bridge. Side. Yeah, southbound was better than northbound. I heard the northbound uh, Nasi Lemak there. Oh, so is it? Bad. Oh, is it? Pretty, yeah. I think it's on... It is on the southbound side, I think. Because I remember I was going northbound, mm-hmm. crossover. Mm-hmm. There is a restaurant which sells Nasi Lemak in the morning. The southbound one was uh, where I had my first time I tried a coconut shake. Mm. It was life changing. Yeah, huh? <laughs> After that, yeah. That's it, huh? That's it. Total. Just lie down. Uh, oh, that's like, where have you been all my life? Yeah. Oh my God, yeah. Now it's taking over Singapore, man. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, but speaking of the Ayak Road thing, right? I don't know. I, got, I think I've got an un- unpopular opinion here, mm-hmm. but I think the AW there is quite overrated. The Jajantas one, right? The Ayak Road. I yeah. would agree with you. Mm. I think the standards have uh, slipped a lot mm. and, but I think in the time where um, AW made a hiatus from Singapore yeah. and that was your only yeah. way to yeah. get AW fix people would put up with it and, and then yeah. now not so much now the AW in Singapore is pretty good yeah. mm. in fact the fried chicken mm. is one of the best of amongst the, 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 the fast food one. wow that's so strong I feel that rest stop is just that you get that novelty you know that it's the first A and W probably encounter in Malaysia if yeah, you're driving probably. up for a whole generation. Uh, I mean, A and W exited the Singapore market for what thirty over years. I mean, they were messing around. They came back for a while. Ah, uh, and then they, they, they chow, then they come back chow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when they came back, I didn't want to, you know, really you like them. no. I didn't have any A and W. Really, uh, fool me once and yeah. No, 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 no. They, I, I dare say that. They're better than the Malaysia ones. Really, yeah? Mm. So you're saying A&W fried chicken is better than Arnold's? Ooh, I say it warrants a, a, a taste test. <laughs> you're losing your mind, man. Hey, I, I, think, <laughs> I think we need to do a, a taste test. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah. But then the problem is you you need to have it like hot and fresh. Yeah. And, right? So so it's... Yeah, yeah. That's right, that's right. That's right. But Arnold's... This, this feels like a future podcast yeah. episode. No, I mean, Live show. Stick to cars, man. Don't, don't, don't do fun. What, really? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, Sounds fun to me. Really? Yeah? Oh, gosh. I think he gets uh, to eat, la, so that's, I think he's dissatisfied, right? Nah, sorry? Jordan gets to eat. Yeah, so yeah, 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 satisfied. Yeah. Anything goes on this show. Okay? No, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not... Uh, Precious, uh, I, I think we have to cater to a diverse field of topics. Okay, right? okay, and, uh, okay. It's all good. That's why I've been talking about what coconut shakes line, yeah. bees, and uh, God knows what else we started out with. Uh, McDonald's, McDonald's fries. fries. Yeah. <laughs> but okay, let's, let's get back on track about cars. Yes. Um, last, uh, this week, quite, quite busy uh, car-wise, right? Quite a lot of stuff. Uh, yep. I think yeah. F1 is uh, around the corner. Mm. So activities, car had, related activities are we, coming up. We've had the first F1 related activity for the public to take part in. Okay. Um, McLaren is having a simulator challenge at their showroom from now until the week before F1. So 20th I think of September. 20th of September. Mm-hmm. Um, you go down there, F1 22, they've got a simulator rig set up. Mm. Um, fastest three times from every week wins. Okay. McLaren uh, wireless earphones from Klipsch. Nice. Clip. You've won already, lah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I guess the, the, <laughs> uh, the story of that also, um, John's um, uh, hu- uh, sense of uh, humility uh, prevents him from saying that he actually was the fastest on the mm. media day. O- only for the media day. Only for the media. What do yeah. you mean only for the media day? Because yeah. our times are resetted after the day. Yeah, after so media day. The, the time, I mean, our competition is only the rest of the journalists uh, in the industry. La. Like the actual public competition is open to the public. Right. So, so you remember your time that you said, what's the, I, what's your FTD? You may not, but I remember. 145.7. Mm. 1 minute 45.7. Okay. So folks, listeners, 145.7 mm. is the time. So there's a lap time um, around the Marina Bay Street circuit uh, in the McLaren F1 car. Uh, you get but three, for real, what's the for real? Uh, the fastest time that was on the computer, like some whoever had previously set it was a 141. Okay. How does that, Compared to real life, to the actual... I remember. It's been three years. Yeah. And in any case, the this year's cars are a very different um, capital of fish to the 2019 cars that last raced in Singapore. 
you could argue that this year cars will be slightly slower because they have a rated slow top speed, but not sure if it's relevant for Singapore considering the yeah, streets are quite got tight. More it, it got more aero than, than before. So I think uh, Singapore has never been a top speed circuit, so that doesn't really matter. But how much speed they can carry to the corner. So I feel that I think the 22 cars should be faster than 19. Okay, so the race lap record, right, according to Google, right, is 141.905 mm. mm. by Kevin Magnuson in a Haas. Wow. Yeah, in Haas. 2018. Kevin is, is back in the Haas, actually. Yeah. Really? After, and he's still yeah. there. Oh, so I mean, he a, left for a while. That's la. race record, but what about yeah, the qualifying, lap record? Because qualifying would be the fastest the timing. race lap record, you actually, it's actually slightly slower than the fastest qualifying lap. Right. Well, I just said best record and uh, yeah. I would, I would guess that maybe the quality you can knock off two seconds, so like a 39. 9, 38 maybe. Yeah, maybe 39, 38. Probably by Hamilton. Probably. Yeah, probably. So, so you did a 147.5. 45. 145. Okay, so you would still be off the pace lah. Oh, definitely. Oh, definitely. But we, but oh, we did oh, only have... Okay, so Marina Bay fastestlaps.com says that Lewis Hamilton... Uh, has a 136. Wow, ah, okay. Uh, there we go. What year was that? That was... There's data. N- okay, let me... It's the W09. So that would have been in 2017. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't want to give the year oh, la, and the date. They give the whole like... The W09 chassis. Uh, that was the W14. So okay. so you did a uh, 145, right, yep. uh, John? Yep. 145 would put you around the 71st <laughs> fastest lap with uh, Pascal Verlaine. Yeah. <laughs> Which uh, did a 145.06. So you were 145 what? 0. 0.7. Very far. Uh, oh, you still be behind him. Be so you'll be... You'll be in between Pascal Verlaine and yeah. Jensen Button. In but, McLaren MP431. But after the competition, I didn't have a second goal just, just for kicks. I All did right. do a 42.9. So where would that put me? Uh, 42.9. I would bring you up a few You'll be right pages. behind Esteban Ocon in the Old Force India. That's all right. No, no, you'll be behind no Carlos Sainz uh, in a 9. Toro Rosso forty two nine. Wait, forty two oh nine. Yeah, it's where the first. Oh, oh, forty. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. forty two point nine. Oh, point nine. Okay, because uh, Carlos Sainz was a forty two point oh six. Right. So forty two nine. Yeah, you'd be. Congratulations! You have beaten Daniel Ricciardo <laughs> when he was still at Red Bull. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, okay, well, I, I, would, I won't comment about all time position. Mm, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. not bad. <laughs> what about you, uh, Sean? You, you also had a I, go in it. So, okay, so, so the, the cool thing about this, right, mm-hmm. like, before you reveal your timing, is that ignition, ignition laps got first and second right. for this media. So yeah. Well done, guys. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Maximum points. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I guess as the official um, press conference after. <laughs> The media challenge. Uh, yeah, yeah. What, what time do you do, uh, I Sean? did a 49.5. Mm. 149.5. Uh, okay. You did 145. Mm. Sorry. Did 149. Man. Oh, 149.5. Oh. That, that would put can. you uh, so everyone in else. the 82nd place. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's, you that's would have good. displaced Sebastian Vettel that's in a so Ferrari cool. sf 16 I do not want to displace him. He's uh, my actual hero. So. <laughs> yeah, well, he's, go, he's, go, he's he is being displaced by the end of this year. So, so I mean... Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> but... I mean, if I may add, Ignition Labs were the only people that did a sub-150. If I recall. <laughs> yeah, because third place was uh, Horizon. So, Horizon yeah. Travis Club and there was a 140. 152-something. 150 we would not reveal who it was. Okay. Yeah. So Why not? You wouldn't even... Why are you so afraid? I mean... <laughs> cool. Okay. Yeah. That, that, so, okay. Um, for members of the public, uh, if you were Joe Public, yep. is this something worth checking out? How was the rig? Uh, was it like uh, realistic? Yeah. Um, okay, so the rig is quite cool. Uh, you s- mm. it's set up like a formula car. So like a formula race car. I saw the picture. seating position is yeah, completely yeah. different from a normal correct, car. Correct. Your butt is like centimeters off the ground, and, and your knees your, are almost your knees like and your ear level, are, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you're kind of it's like in a, in a Recumbent- half lying down, half lying down lay back position. Yeah, yeah. Um. The brake pedal has uh-huh. got a hydraulic reservoir with uh-huh. like actual dot for brake fluid, so right. it replicates the feel of. It's a bit a of mushiness. Pe- yes. Kind of, uh, yeah, but it, you know, you've got pressure, it's resistance against your left pressure. foot. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like so, a wall. Uh. Well, that's not, the thing. I, so I bad, heard uh. that, that. It's, it's quite progressive, like, mm-hmm. like, a, like a road car, so it's quite familiar for us right. 
uh, regular drivers. And you can kind of uh, modulate that yeah. parking, uh, right? Yeah, it's yeah. quite easy to modulate. Um, okay. And the your, the steering wheel is an actual like formula wheel with an LCD readout. So uh-huh. you can, it displays your lap time, your gears. And your the revs. shift lights. And yeah, shift lights. Mm. Um, most of the time, actually. Most of the time, it, yeah. It broke for mine. <laughs> oh, say the racing driver excuse yeah. starting yeah. already. Yeah. Yeah. That's why yeah, yeah, my shift light broke. And, so I think yeah. for the public, uh, I mean, it's a very small taste of what it's like to drive a Formula car, mm. an F1 car. But the great thing about this challenge is that it's free. Mm-hmm. Sign up. Uh, mm-hmm. Based on time slots, uh, it's limited on that. But mm-hmm. it's free to enter. Mm. And you can go down to the McLaren showroom at Lenky Road. No, probably any day of the week I think I didn't go and see what the actual time what the actual slots are available mm. or what the actual available slots are but mm-hmm. um, yeah it's uh, ex- open to all which is you know, great for F1's return and cool. if you are also a supporter of McLaren cars it's a nice way to be in touch with the team in that sense because everything is McLaren themed down to the, oh, the I mean, you mean down the to the earpieces actually oh yeah, yeah. No, and also McLaren edition and also you get to uh, you know, it's, at the, it's at the showroom so you'll be amongst all the McLaren cars as well if that's your if you want to check those out that's your thing lah mm. okay okay alright so that's, that's the first I imagine several other brands will be having other stuff um, in the coming weeks mm-hmm. so that, does it mean if I set a time this week mm-hmm. and I win the headphones whatever yeah, yeah. I come back the next week and I'm the fastest. So they've thought of that. Oh, really? Yeah. Because so the guy who is providing a sim rig, uh, he's 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 uh, active in the sim racing scene in Singapore uh, as a provider of uh, these rigs. So he did advise McLaren that you better set this rule that if you've won it once, you can't win again because otherwise the same the yeah. same guy the same small tiny bunch of sim racers right will just be doing it over and yeah, over yeah, and over yeah, and yeah. the public the, won't get a chance. The Jonathans yeah. I will come back. Yeah. No, there are people faster than me. Yeah, there are people they're, faster than you for sure. Yeah. So, especially the sim guys, right? Especially the sim guys. Yeah. So this is to give normal people a chance. Mm. You win it once, then okay, then you cannot try again. Yeah, normal people. But it'd be models. nice to sort of uh, have a kind of an informal leaderboard, right? To know who... I'm sure they have one. Done the uh, probably there'll be an online. And I'd be interested yeah. to know how close to the actual lap times in the real car mm. um, they can get. Oh, I mean, in, in general, right, with mm-hmm. sim racing, uh, given enough practice of, like, you know, maybe a couple of hours or a couple, like, mm-hmm. a couple of days of practice, yeah, um, in the same car, you can probably get pretty much within the same timing of the yeah. of the professionals in real life. Yeah. Okay. But, well, I, um, yeah, the, the game, the, the simulation would calculate the performance uh, of the cars. So, I mean, you, have, you have the same amount of performance, you know, virtually as... Uh, Hamilton, Verstappen, Leclerc have in real life, and here's where the advantage that there's no brake fade and uh, yeah, you have the road the, is is perfect. Yeah, there's no bumps on the road. Uh, don't, don't get that side. You go over a manhole cover and they kind of uh, those, you, those you, can. you can you can yes, you can the most most serious racing scenes was was yeah. bumps in the road or like uh-huh. minor camber changes, yeah. lack of traction when you go over the rumble strips. Right. Those kind of very minute details, those yeah. are usually uh, accounted the for. The bus stop lines. Yeah. Yeah, even yeah. if you get out of the racing line or so, it, it can affect. It can affect. Yeah. At least gradually. Get squirrely and all that. Yeah. yeah if, you, if you feel a bit less grip, your car has a bit more hesitation on turning in. You know. Is that communicated through the steering? Um, a little bit. Things? Sometimes, depending on how good your own steering wheel is. Mm-hmm. Um, but that is re- that's usually a bit more tricky to detect uh, unless you're like really, really good. Mm-hmm. But usually you will Visually, you can see like, eh, how come I, you know, my turn in, I'm not meeting the apex, you know, because yeah. I was like half a car's width too right. wide off the line. Right. And when you're picking up the marbles, uh, or, you know, this, you're off the racing groove. Lah. Then you feel the v- rumbling. Not so much the vibration, but it's just, you recognize that your car is not turning as much as it did the previous lap. Ha ha. Mm. So they can work in the tire degradation. Yeah. Yeah. That's, brake degradation. I think almost all sims have it. Yeah. So this, this one, did have the DRS button? It had DRS buttons. Yeah. And the biggest change that from a standard sim rig is that you do get the force feedback, which is, for my understanding, is 16 Gs? Was it? 16 uh, Newtons. Uh. Oh, where? In the all, seat? Yeah, oh, in the, oh, the steering wheel. wheel. Oh, in the no, all wheel. all, steering, all yeah. steering wheels will have some kind of force yeah. feedback. Like yeah. Just how Violent. tight your, your rig is depends mm. uh, affects how much uh, resistance you have against the wheel uh. so uh, that one at McLaren is quite good it's a I direct mean, drive it's a direct drive wheel so it's, it's quite high end uh. but even in office here this Trustmaster which is a mid-range 
um, wheel or even a entry level Logitech, uh, those will have some kind of force feedback that you know mm. you kind of need that. There's, there's no way to drive. Or I don't think it's possible to have a wheel that doesn't have force feedback unless it's old and broken. Mm. Yeah, true. Mm. Even the G twenty five have force yeah. feedback. It's interesting that you say that even the entry level such as the Logitech mm. because. I would say maybe about 10 years ago, that 10, yeah. 12, that was the only option. And three, the, back then Logitech was... As a consumer, yeah. la, right? You wanted to buy a, a, a wheel, mm-hmm. that was pretty much it. You go Logitech. Mm-hmm. But now you can go Fanatec. Yeah. Pretty much, they are decent. And the, and the direct drive ones are, are accessible. You Actually, mm-hmm. if you had the money, you could buy. Yeah. Because now after the now that sim racing has become has grown in popularity compared to like yeah. a decade ago, la. so yeah. now you've got more companies entering the fray. Exactly. Uh, and the pricing come down because more people are doing it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But Logitech is still a good uh so now back then, the G twenty five era, it was pretty much I would say that would be mid range. Mm. Uh nowadays, you know, with Fanatec and uh, Trustmaster coming in, those I think those have uh usurped Logitech as the, the mid tier brands. Mm. But I would say if anyone who is if there's anyone who's serious in giving sim racing a try or just racing with a, with a wheel in general, uh, Logitech would still be the go like it's the best yeah. um, entry point yeah. because it's the best mix of um, budget friendliness compared to realism. Yes, correct. And it does have support for, I mean, Gran Turismo. Yeah, Gran Turismo, kind of stuff, Forza, so PC. It's easy, yeah. yeah. Cool, man. So that's not the only sim action that uh, uh, you've been up to, John. Uh, I think Toyota has has uh, one that you can take part at home, theoretically, or had one. Had one. Had one. Um, so it's over, as, it's as, done. As of uh, time of recording this podcast, uh, the competition has been done. Okay. Um, but to the public, it will be live streamed uh, in, I think, should be this weekend. I saw... Um, a Facebook post by um, someone who works for Toyota and mm-hmm. in the organization and showed like a promo um, poster that I, I was a little bit confused about. Uh, they had some GT Cup uh, kind of poster. Mm-hmm. I may have taken it down actually, but <laughs> uh, because you told me this this Toyota GT Cup mm-hmm. uh, series, um, you had three different races, right? Mm-hmm. In each race, you race a different GR Toyota That's model. Car, yeah. uh, one, one is a eighty six, and then one's a. Is it going to be called a GR eighty six or GR eighty six? GR eighty six, okay. Mm-hmm. GR eighty six, uh, GR Yaris, mm-hmm. and then uh, Supra. Yep. it's not GR Supra, right? Technic- just, technically, it's GR Supra. Technically, it's a technically. GR Supra. Hmm, okay, so. I understood that. Then I saw, I should have really screenshot this one. <laughs> because it short. This promo poster mm-hmm. that had a GR well, Supra mm-hmm. on one side and an 86 on the other side. Mm-hmm. In the middle, mm-hmm. what appears to be a formula car, open car. Okay. So this is where it gets a bit uh, confusing. Mm. Because, so Toyota GR GT Cup, because we're racing the mm. Turismo Cup. Mm. Gran Turismo itself, mm. I suppose we've, we've support, um, supported by Toyota Japan, has a global online championship that okay. is seven or eight races long and is like over a few months. Okay, a season. A season, yes. All right. Uh, and that, uh, Gran, that Gran Turismo-based competition has that Formula car. It's a Formula SF19. So it's a single seat championship they have in Japan. Oh, they, they do have their open yes. wheel, uh, single make. Yeah. Hey. So that was, well, it's the same chassis and it's Honda and, and Toyota have built engines but to the same spec. So it's a, it's a formula. Oh. Uh, then they had the, the JGTC, uh, Tom uh, Kestrel, mm-hmm. Supra GT500, they were like really iconic uh, okay. Supra race car from the 90s right. uh, and then the GR lineup. Okay. So that is Toyota Japan's and Gran Turismo's global championship. Mm-hmm. The Singapore one is uh, uh, just a domestic uh Three round championship like on the held on the same day mm-hmm. uh, on held online. Mm. Uh, so this one used only the three road cars, the Supra Yaris and the E6. Okay. So yeah, so this thing that so I it's not in was entirely domestic. incorrect la. I mean yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not. But uh, it's just different competitions. Okay. But there are different competitions for different regions. Okay. But the top three from mm-hmm. the Singapore competition would will go on to represent. Uh, Singapore in this GR Gran Turismo Asia Cup and then from Asia they will go on to represent the top two from Asia I think will go to represent 
Uh, sorry, the top two from Asia will represent the continent against the other regions and Grand Turismo. So Oceania, North America, South America, Europe, and uh, the rest of Asia, and Japan, I think, in the global competition. So that would be a... Um, so this, this will be the finalists from the main Grand Turismo competition all coming together to have, you know, in person for an actual competition to crown, I guess, the Toyota GR a GT champion of the world. So that would be like in November, I think. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so it's the Singapore one was the one that I took part in. Okay. And how did you do? Badly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what happened to the, you know, oh, McLaren... Uh, or, uh, no, it's not, okay, so my clarity happened after that, okay. after the, the Toyota thing. Oh, so you learn from, uh, uh, or maybe well, better equipment. I mean, not, you put it not really. I think the GR Cup and yeah. Grand Turismo have a lot of fast drivers. Yeah, so a the lot. difference between, and not, not to belittle our colleagues in, in the industry, but the media challenge, um, they're not full, they're not like, Full uh, experienced sim racers, mm-hmm. you know, they don't do it as a hobby. You know, for example, mm. so compared not- to the uh, ones that I race with in the GR Cup, those guys are like hardcore. Those yeah. are like as close to professional sim racers as it's possible to be in Singapore. Yeah, okay. aliens, are, right? Yeah, you call it, yeah, aliens. They call them yeah. aliens. Aliens. Are. Yeah, it's oh. a term What's to that? describe people who really, um, I would say, exploit, not exploit in a good way. Mm. Sim racing. Mm. Like they can find lines which nobody can mm. find. It's insane. Yeah. Is it one of those, um, I mean, is it purely through that driving skill or is it purely, it's like, you know, last time those guys would play Street Fighter, right? They, they know the certain combination mm. of, of, of buttons to push that, yeah. you know, unleash um, uh, a certain advantage or whatever. Right? Yeah, in so racing, no, there's no sim codes. racing, there's no... There's no cheat codes, codes, but there is a line that you can take, like, for example, uh-huh. um, a racing line, an yeah, actual yeah, yeah. real-life racing line will right. not play the same as... As on the game, la. The, the game game's cases, racing yeah. line is going to be different yeah, yeah. a little bit, Correct. right? And it isn't cheating. I wouldn't say that it is cheating, I would say that that's it's a racing game. It's an exploit for you to find. Yeah, it's, it's getting to, to a point yeah. where now the whole idea of sim racing is supposed to be as realistic to the real thing as possible. Yep. Right. And then, mm. but is. now you're coming to a point where you have specialist sim drivers. Mm-hmm. You now, obviously, specialist racing drivers, mm-hmm. and and one can do each task better than than, yep. than the next. So the sim yep. guy can do things yeah, that the real guy can't do in his uh, yep. car and can't yep. achieve like, in mm. terms of lap times and, mm. and, and, and and whatever. So, but, we, but beyond the realms of just like specific um, exp- familiarity and expertise in either field, if you plonk a real race driver into a sim or you plonk a good sim driver into a real close. race car, yeah, yeah, you yeah. will get to like well above 90% of each other's performance. Yeah. Right, right. I mean, you'll be close, mm. but, but it's sort of mirroring also what sports cars or performance cars are becoming in, in, in real life as well. That they're so mm, specialized mm. that eventually they're coming to this point where um, average drivers cannot uh, access the ability of that car. Oh, yeah. Mm. Or, or even roads or, <clears throat> you know, you, yeah. the cars are so, like like the GT3 RS, for example. Mm. Now you've got these buttons that can change the arrow and you, you know, it's almost like, I get it, you, you're, you're sort of bringing as much of that racing car experience mm. to the road, but you put it in the hands of... of, of Someone with a class three license and all that. They're not even gonna no. access a fraction of, of, of what the car is capable of or yeah. they'll embarrass themselves or even kill themselves mm. and others trying to yeah. so is it becoming so, Yeah, no, that's that's completely the way that performance cars have been going for a few years now that yeah. you, the performance levels are so high that you just can't access them on the road. Mm. That's why Toyota made such a big deal of the original, the GT eighty six being a car that you can have fun with and having it's those Michelin Primacy tires. Mm. So you have low grip means you exploit, you feel the car's ha- handling limits. Interesting, and they spec it with Primacy and not Pilot Sport tires. Yeah. Because they wanted to lower the, the lower the, the dynamic threshold. limits, the threshold, yeah, so that you can have fun without, you know, going that much faster if you do mm-hmm. lose it. Mm-hmm. So that's a philosophy that I've agreed with. Mm-hmm. Uh, rather than 
you know, yeah, more in, increasingly, you know, the cars that we test, even performance cars, especially the electrics, I feel, yeah. there's not, there's no joy to be found in uh, driving them at what, you, you want to like really enjoy the handling, you're, 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 you have to be traveling at speeds that are completely irresponsible mm-hmm. and you are actually, you know, very close to endangering other road users. Whereas right. if you're driving like something from the 90s, like an old NA MX-5 or yeah. even like my Lancer, which is something very basic, mm-hmm. yeah, you can, you know, find the limit, but, you know, at a speed that won't make other road users say, oh, that guy needs to be on SGRV. Mm. Let's upload mm. his uh, dash cam. Let's, let's upload the dash cam footage of that. So, hmm. so this whole, like now more, I think uh, there's a few more car manufacturers that are responding to this trend and they're kind of dialing back from overall performance figures and just trying to deliver more of a more feel, driving fun. More, more of a driving feel rather than driving performance. Right. Um, but it's a bit, that movement isn't strong enough, I feel. Hmm. I think because it's it's so easy, like tire technology, for example, you can get stickier tires all the time that exploit more grip, and then there's also that stylistic trend where they want wider tires yeah. and that kind of thing. But yeah. sometimes it, it's too much of a good thing, and then you get over tired, and uh, you know, and then that, you lose that slipperiness, and you lose that 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 fun oh, factor. I mean, uh, there's there's different use cases mm. like, when you want to get those really sticky tires those help those are very important if you're going to Sepang for example you know, you're going to yep. Chang Day yep. um, yes but it's overspent if you're doing if you're driving on the road la, yep. which a lot of people do it for do buy those tires for vanity reasons and yes completely they are more doing it more to I guess show off or maybe not show off la, but so I buy the best so they equip yeah. the best being it's like, in, in excess of what they, they need, they need mm. yeah um, yeah, and, and what you mentioned earlier about drivers not being able to exploit performance, that's very true. Because uh, so I went for the track for a track day at Sepang, I think a couple of months ago, yeah, uh, at the start of July. Mm. Uh, one of my friends who went there went in the eighty six, and his car is not very modified. It's got suspension. He bought tires, but engine I think is quite stock. And he did a two forty seven or two forty eight. Nice. Mm-hmm. What what tires were you using? Uh, should be RS only ones. Okay, Ooh, not RS. the RS. I should be RS. Should I think. be RS. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then recent, there was a more recent track day that happened a couple of weeks ago where a lot of A6 and BRZs went, and those guys weren't that quick. A lot of them were like above two fifties. Mm. Some of them were modded. I I heard from uh him, uh, you know, he's because he's obviously in that group. There's a guy with a supercharged, uh, BRZ or A6, and he only did like a two forty eight. Mm. So mm. you know, I mean, the track conditions. Um, should be quite similar, I suppose. Maybe it was daytime as opposed to the one that we did was at night, mm. but it was dry. Mm. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's quite common that even amongst the people who are doing it right and you know, they're t- taking their cars to track, um, the driving skill is good, but not, uh, yeah, they're still not, not enough to really utilize the, the realize the potential of the, the car. The car. Yeah. All yeah. the tires. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. Cool. So, all right, so guys. So with that, yeah. Um, is there anything else you want to cover on? You drove the BMW i4 M50. Yes. yes. How did you <laughs> find that? <laughs> okay, I, I get the feeling that you are having to find the politically correct way of expressing your thoughts. That's a very long squeal. Yeah. <laughs> Very unfortunate. Uh. It's turning purple, I think, out of breath already. It's weird, man. <laughs> You've driven it, no? I've not driven it, no. no. I've, I have, like, uh, short, short bursts. Uh, and? Oh. And? Hmm? And? And? It's, okay, it's effectively, the M badge is very confusing for the car because okay. on a personal level, the car doesn't deserve it. Right. It's, it doesn't feel that much different from the regular i4. Mm-hmm. And that's a shame. Because then what's the point of the M-Batch? Because mm. all you get are different seats. A bit more styling, a mm. bit more options, but that's about it. Mm-hmm. Like, you could be very happy with the regular i4 mm-hmm. and save quite a bit of money. Mm. You so, don't really need the... So what's the price difference? You wouldn't miss the... Realize what you're missing out on. So okay. that's... a i4 M50. M50. Yes. Yeah. So officially... So it's the first... Yeah. 
MEV. Mm-hmm. That's how they position it, right? Mm. So Although we see M ex- performance. Ex- expectation. Yeah. Anything to wear an M badge mm. that's in the from the EV yeah. uh, world, right? So so obviously this comes with some expectations mm. and all that. I mean BMW organized the whole thing at CEC and uh, you you attended that one, right? Yeah. But the I only drove the M fifty like in a straight line track race. So, okay. So did they do any demo or tell you any I might have not known how to access the whole thing. So oh yeah, you were any cheat modes? I had COVID that week. Yeah, COVID. So, yeah. Mm. So were they able to drive it dynamically or tell you if you press this and you press that or you? Not really. There's that's like a boost mode, but yeah, that's okay. that's only power, right? It's only a straight line. Yeah. Uh, we didn't have the opportunity to drive the M4, the i4 in the, the M50 in the dynamic. No taxi laps. So. No. It was just a uh, jet race, Ooh. which obviously it, will, it wins like, against the uh, M440i and uh, the yeah. X3, X4, M40. This, yeah. So this yeah. drag race thing really, uh, there's this, this just no skill needed yeah. other than if, to keep the car on a straight line. I mean, it's even less skill needed in a in an EV, right? Because it, it's just it's your, power, yeah, your, your, your power is linear. There's yeah. no like, new, there's no RPM that you need to launch it at. Yeah. There's no shifting involved. Yeah. So... I guess the thing was, I'm thinking in the context of an EV and mm-hmm. stuff like that, right? If I I could have thought about five different things that they could have done to maybe make it feel more engaging or... Okay, you know, let's hear it. And part of it is spec kind of thing. We'll get to that later. But first thing I would have done, I don't know if it's the first thing, but one of the things that I would have done if I wanted to make that car feel more... More M. Mm-hmm. Maybe just do a real wheel drive version. Okay. Like get it get a bit more weekly and then you can have different dynamic modes to allow mm. certain degrees of play and that mm-hmm. kind of thing, right? Then I would have put some shift pedals uh, behind the steering wheel. Oh, that doesn't have pedals. No, no pedals. Oh, right. Of any kind. Yeah. So at least to, to vary the the engine braking, mm. right? Yeah, and some other cars, gen, they do that. Mm. So you, yes, you can't shift gears, but you can at least play with the regeneration. I think that'd be quite fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then, um, okay, then the suspension, I would have kind of maybe firmed it up a little bit mm. or, you know, made it feel a bit more aggressive. Certainly, maybe in sport mode and all that. Is that a, the adaptive no. suspension? If it did, it didn't feel very adaptive. Yeah, right, it just... Yeah. Felt the same as 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 the. I'd have to obviously jump back to back into a uh, like regular I four to 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 get any sense of the difference. But the fact that I have to do that means I can't really tell from the offset that mm. this is a M car, you know. Then the last one that I think would have been very possible is you have as per your M cars the. The M1, M2 mm. preset buttons mm-hmm. that you can do that. That that would have really set that sense of occasion in it. So maybe there will be a I4M. Yeah. Uh, like an, the fullness an actual full M, yeah. An actual full time. And maybe all these things will happen. So, okay, mm. like I'll reserve judgment. But until then, if and when a car like that have uh, materializes... I just say get the get the regular i4. Mm. Do you feel that unless you like the M seats, which which I wasn't really a fan of because it mm. didn't feel that comfortable. But how to much me. horsepower does the normal i4 make versus the M50, which is doesn't like matter. Five, five doesn't plus. doesn't matter. Because it does it does. The regular i4 is I think three hundred and forty. Oh okay, about so it's quite quick that, really. that region. Yeah, this and one is five four four. Right, and so that's M kind of power figures as of today. Yeah, but, yeah. but, but yeah. okay, I did sort of like the one or two occasions mm-hmm. where I kind of surprised, shocked myself also because it's one of those things where um, I needed to make this left turn but I found myself on like two lanes over mm-hmm. and then normally in the car I said, okay, I want to get ahead of that uh, mm-hmm. the traffic so that I can make that left turn and all yeah. that. And then I kind of, you know, accelerated well, I didn't even floor it, but accelerated mm. hard. And well, it gave me this kind of kick in the back that mm. I was like, almost embarrassed myself. With. I felt embarrassed because I like, I could imagine my if I were the other vehicles taking off from that green light, going, hey, bro, relax lah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I, didn't, I want to get ahead, but I didn't want to get that far ahead. But I was just like, kind of like, 
you know, gave it like 50% of the beans. Mm. Yeah. And, and I had this huge slap on the back of my head. Okay, from and the headrest. <laughs> yeah, from the headrest, right. It was almost like, you know, somebody punishing me like, hey, don't, don't be stupid. <laughs> la. Yeah. It felt literally like that. And I felt just as embarrassed as mm. if someone were to actually do that. And so, mm. it, it doesn't need to be, you don't need an EV that, that mm. violently fast. I would rather have um, maybe more like, in gear acceleration or acceleration from the top end, mm-hmm. right? That kind of thing. But those are the kind of speeds that I would only contemplate sort of not in Singapore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. To be fair, like yeah. the amount of power you get is just excessive because mm. the regular i4 can do anything the i4 M50 can yeah. do in Singapore on a... Within the context yeah, of yeah, what's the, legal mm, here, right? Really, you can go zero to hundred faster. It's more than it's more than enough. And in the yeah, regular if, iPhone, if in, in real world usage, yeah, yeah, you're gonna if you're gonna experience a three point nine second zero to hundred mm. uh, acceleration, right? It honestly does not feel good. Your person, you're gonna do it like once to show off. Go like yeah, to show yeah. off. Mm. So just prove and a point. And even if yeah. you wouldn't want to do it again because mm. it's so violent and it's so. It just doesn't feel good. Nah. It's not, not mm. like, you know, the other sports cars or where you do it. Somehow, this, the, the, the delivery in a way is sort of like it, you feel this crescendo building. Yeah, and all but, that but on this particular point, this is a, a characteristic of EVs in general, like, right? Yeah. Not just it's the, almost uh, shocking. Yeah. Like, mm. not in a good way, no. Like, ah, pun, like, pun yeah. intended. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally, yeah. yeah. Just, like, like, and the know. power comes so suddenly then you don't have time to actually react to it. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So, but, I mean, you could probably argue the same for like the Polestar, for the Tesla, for the Audi RS, each one. You know, any, any fast EV would have the same kind of... Yeah, you know, so so in any of these examples that you've named, right, the base models of each, uh, the entry model, mm. is plenty. That yeah. In every instance, Taycan or uh, Polestar and uh, e-tron. e-tron and all that, the base models makes the most sense because mm. I get the best range from those. And it's still plenty fast, mm-hmm. and I save money. I mean, it's, it's the cheapest of the of that range, la. So it's it's you know all upside in my book. Right? And to be honest, unless the guy beside you at the traffic light is also driving another EV of mm-hmm. comparable spec size, yep. you're gonna you really won't lose. And yeah. somebody's gonna kill themselves if if it comes to that situation. <laughs> sort of, mm. you know, the the i4 M50 versus the Tesla performance or mm-hmm. whatever, and you really wanna. Have it out. Uh, wow, it's, really? oh, uh, it's, sounds it's like not an ending that M50 I want to see. Though. What? Sounds like I'll get the M50. I like the fact <laughs> that it's faster. A 3.9, 3.4 seconds. Yeah. Actually, nice. do, you, do you know that it's actually not as fast as the M3 or M4 competition? That's Even okay. the rear drives. That's okay. That's if despite having more power, really? you think Yeah, but I mean, of course, drive. I would take an M3, nah, but if I was totally stuck. Ah, the so. other one I would have done to make this... Uh, MEV more more M I guess right mm. since since BMWs the ICE cars are so big on this active sound design bullshit mm. uh, put it in the put it put, put it in this lah put it in this oh it doesn't uh, have active no, sound no no really? it's not that Hans Zimmer uh, oh. kind of sound but even that also wasn't very pronounced that is the the, the sound design thing one, uh. yeah the, yeah but, but that, that, the, 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 the ICE sci-fi cars, whoosh yeah yeah okay yeah. so an ICE, I mean a car like that then you can put in the in one hand you know, respect to BMW for keeping it real and not putting in a, a ICE a M3 sound or yep. whatever. Well, on the other hand, it's like, I think the audience that, that this car panders to would kind of not mind having access to ability to make it sound more like an, the M car that they're used to, right? Mm. More of a growl, ICE yeah. like yeah. I think that is and then all this is a button. I mean, not mm. all these things you can just. It's a, it's maybe software. a software thing. It's not mm. reinventing the wheel. I'm not asking them to make a flying car or, yeah. or anything like that. But it's it's all within the realms of what can be done. Okay, so locally, um, and and this is a spec issue as well for mm. a car being positioned where it is. I. I I, I don't know the exact price, but I think uh, I can pull it up in a second. Uh. But for a car costing, you know, good part, best part of $400,000, mm. does not have adaptive cruise control. Mm-hmm. Just regular cruise control. And okay. I've been so used to the, the iCars from BMW having adaptive 
right. uh, cruise mm. control that I turn it on expecting fully expecting this car and I nearly really like, <laughs> car and mm. because it's like okay keep leaving a bit late coming coming mm. what it, it doesn't have it's not adaptive it's not an adaptive it might be a cheap yeah. thing uh. yeah it might, it might be, be a be. price thing uh. yeah, I mean, yeah, obviously yeah. that it can be spec'd yeah. obviously you can put you know the whole gamut of things but yeah. I only feel like um these i cars should be on that cutting edge of that autonomous yeah. capability and mm. should have everything that, that in, leads it to a traffic but jam in other countries, yes, and all that. in other countries it depends on how you spec it right it so obviously that, it, that then will change mm. uh, will push up the price even more mm. but you know on that note right because yeah. it doesn't have the lane keep assist and all that also mm. Mm. that's okay so mm. but I think the, the, the oh, okay. I think it comes with it if, if yeah. right if you have if that it comes if, with it. it probably if there is a package you can buy yeah. that includes everything mm. but mm. considering Sheldon's fact is like since you already spend to get the M model okay. it Please. should come as standard mm. but well, what do you think the car cost I won't review it because I can see it. Yeah. 500. I think just below. M- what did you expect it to cost, uh, Sean, before you saw this? Uh, before I saw it, I was thinking for mid 400. Yeah, I was expecting yeah. below 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 M3 pricing. But wait, what, M3? what is M3 pricing right now? 500 plus. M3 plus pricing uh, uh, 421 triple eight. Oh, that M3 is, is competition. Mm. There is competition. Oh, wow. yes. There's no non-competition here. Oh, oh, yeah. Sell, uh, yeah, yeah. oh, it's actually cheaper than I thought. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's way cheaper than right? I thought. Yeah. M3, yeah, yeah. And, and that already includes the, the vest bending because it's very unhealthy for the environment. Oh, yes. Yeah, um, of course. Yeah, like, yeah, so that's actually yeah. not bad. Eh. I fall 400 then. 310. Okay. Triple eight. That's not bad. That's not bad. Thanks this to the I4 minus 15,000 A2 bending. Yeah, but even yeah. still. Yeah. So, what's what's what I mean? oh, okay, so not everyone not is in agreement that eh, not bad price, huh? What's an M440i? Because that's the equivalent. Ah, to, uh, it's uh, right below, uh, right below only. M440 mm. or M440i? It, it's three twenty five triple eight. So it's marginally cheaper than M440. That's a, yeah, that's that's an okay price. That's an okay price, yeah. And a base i4. Base i4. You go under perform, performance yeah, now models. Or Euro cars. That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Next month we can do that. Uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, where are we? Oh, it's a, it's a, uh, us. P O A. So, price on request. I assume that means it's probably sitting around the same price range. Lah. Possibly. Two, uh, I think high 200s. Mm, high 200s. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's in between. You think so? I think it's 300. I, I would say, yeah. what? Well, 30k premium maybe for the M. You can always give a message. Hi, hi, bro. <laughs> would you yeah, would yeah. you think that actually they are sort of subconscious, not subconsciously, like they're trying to phase out the i4 and then they're only gonna sell the M50 variant? Nah, no, I think because I, so. I having done uh, having had to do price list before, you know, back to the the highway price magazine. list days. Yeah, I have noticed you know from time to time BMW car even that the the not the base cars like the two series and the three series. So from time to time you see uh, there'll be a couple of weeks or months that go POA and then the next month the price comes back. So generally that kind of thing is because the cars oh, are out of stock. Be- between shipments mm. and yeah, they're waiting yeah. for stock to arrive. There's no yeah. inventory yet. Right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So how much would it have cost to put in the adaptive cruise control? That's the thing. So it's interesting when it comes to specking of cars yeah. because uh, ERF? sometimes, not ERF, is the thing is if let's say you need adaptive cruise, you might need to get something completely yeah, yeah, with that like, and all that, like yeah. some leather seats or something like that. Things that yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, comfort access or mm. something. I always like notice that, that um, uh, sunroof will always come with heated seats. Yes. yes. Mm. And in some cases, things. a heated steering wheel yeah. <laughs> in Singapore. And th- there, there were a few thing, few other... I, I remember, I think it was a Volkswagen, I think Volkswagen Group car. Mm. I think if you wanted Cassie, which is the killer's... Yeah. I think you needed comfort package yeah, which had yeah. the sunroof which mm. had everything so it was something along those lines I think a particular model yeah. so that particular model had in so Singapore some of these some of these features are tied into packages with other stuff yeah, right? yeah, yeah you have right. to yeah, yeah. Yeah. you so can't it, just have it by itself right? yeah so it's, it's just like I wish I wish uh, BMW had it right in this, in this sense right mm. but some a lot of car companies don't when they have Apple CarPlay wireless mm-hmm. but no wireless charger Mm. Mm. or the right. other way around where it's you a have wireless, wireless charger, charger but, but it's wired so oh, you need oh, yeah. a cable to, to but that's okay because if it's wireless charging you still can connect to bluetooth it's not too bad 
Yeah. Yeah. No. Anyway, I hate Apple CarPlay. Like I think it's rubbish. <laughs> we had this argument before. You had yeah, I talked very long about it. But <laughs> I still CarPlay. hate Apple CarPlay. No, nonsense. after after I got Apple CarPlay, I never want to listen to Bluetooth anymore. You can really listen to the quality or lack thereof. That's a uh, difference? In a, like, oh, there is a difference. difference. Oh, no, don't, don't get it started. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. There okay. is I'll, a difference. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, we'll, we'll yeah you don't have to talk about it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'll talk for you, but yes, <laughs> for sure. You you go back and Why listen to the previous podcast where okay. we, <laughs> episode where we discussed <laughs> this. <laughs> so, so, I put it to you, Sheldon. Yeah. Would the M50 have been less disappointing if not if they hadn't hyped it up so much as the first M EV? If they just released it, if they yeah, didn't hype it up so much? and give that width of expectation okay for the, me I think yes at least sorry I know this question is directed at you but yes I think when they say it's the first M then I think expectations are high yeah, I the mean the, the, the M badge is, is, is something we all kind of grew up and it's a halo exactly. thing you know like later on maybe you have a lesser M versions and all that down the road I don't care lah, mm-hmm. you know but if you yeah. want to sort of plant your flags here and say this is the first M yeah. car then better make it something that it's going to sort of be iconic or mm. really really try your best yeah. and, and the fact that you have cars like the Taycan or the Audi uh, e-tron GT uh, mm. um, it's on another level altogether right yep. Right. those are very much performance oriented cars and mm. they really this was and, and BMW currently does not have a true equivalent a bespoke to, EV, right? To something that can compete on that same mm, level, right? Right. So, I mean, I, I I get it that it's platform sharing. It's there are limitations to what you can mm. do and all that. But just if I was an EV buyer, right, I'm looking at the whole range of cars, yeah. and then I look at this huge bonnet that cannot be opened on the i4, mm. and wonder like, you missed the trick here. You should have. Mm. Uh, where's the frunk? You know, right. you could have. Uh, you know, things like that. So if I'm looking for EVs, I would look for things like the Frank and mm. amongst all these things. And of course, there's a level of um, autonomous operation that, mm. that you wouldn't find, uh, expect to find or demand in uh, ICE. Mm. Right? So, you know. So I think, yeah, as I don't want to use the word disappointed, mm-hmm. but I think there's a lot more that they could have done quite easily mm to make it more of an M car than what is already out here. So, I, I, I put it to you directly, right? Mm. Do you think that you would consider an i4 standard or M50 over its rivals, which would be the Polestar, the Tesla, the Audi? Also, yeah, I would take the Polestar first, the performance, mm-hmm. because um, I feel like the Polestar... Is what I like about it is the no start stop button. You just mm. jump in. The seat is oh. your start stop button. Oh, yeah. Start stop. And, and then uh. we experienced maybe the man on the street wouldn't care, uh, but as motoring journalists trying to get a photo shoot done with this car, right? Oh, oh, the car switches off I, by itself, right? Yeah. So you know, sometimes you want to leave the car on so that the lights are on, mm. or the, take a photo of the dashboard so that everything's on, right? Yeah. But the minute you couldn't do it without someone being in the driver's seat. Yeah. You had so the minute to, you, you had to you close step the out, door. the car shuts down. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right? I, I remember seat that. Belt but yet, to start the fucking car, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you have to press the... How many episodes the, have you managed to go without a vulgarity? Yeah, I know. <laughs> you want to use one of your... <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. no I, I'm sure you can do the bleep. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure you can do the bleep in post. No, no. Yeah. Okay, okay. It is what it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So... To start the car, you have the start-stop button. But you can't leave it started. <laughs> mm, yeah. Right? This is the post so no? like To me, oh, I think the, the EV, the they've BM, come to a BM, point or? yeah, where um, Polestar and then by admission, Tesla also. They both, the minute your driver sits in the car, the car is ready to go already. You mm. just drive off. I would expect that in any EV now. Mm. Right? Mm. To me, that's, that's the... One of the on the checklist lah, is right. Frank and the whole thing, the remote uh, aircon, mm. especially in our climate. You know, those, those are the cool practical things that mm. uh, I would want uh, the car to do. So, yeah, even on that level, take away that M side for a while. 
it still has a little bit of catching up to do. A little bit, yeah. For me, I'm a bit disappointed. I'm, I'm a, a bit disappointed and surprised by what you say about the M50's handling because I've not driven that yet, but I did drive the E-Drive 40, the base car, and I thought that even though you say that, oh, maybe the M50 would be better if it was rear drive instead of four, mm. I thought well, the E-Drive 40 is rear drive only, mm. and I felt the handling was a bit weird. I, f- I genuinely feel that the Tesla and the Polestar are better more handling balanced, cars mm, and they're much more sure. balanced. And they're also all-wheel drive, huh? They are all-wheel drive. And they, if, you I think buy, if you spring for the performance, performance. So what yeah. didn't you like about the i4? It's a very... Okay, so I went to go and... It felt... The way they handled weird, it. Yeah, the, the weight distribution felt not like a BMW. So I did go and check. Mm-hmm. And it's actually a rear bias weight distribution. Okay. It's actually like a mid-engine car. It's 45% front, 55% rear. Mm. Which is good, right? No, Maybe. because when you have that much mass and you have yeah. that kind of weight balance when you're, when you're throwing it into corners, uh. it does weird, the, that so much mass at the back does weird things with the back front wants end. To come around. Yeah, so it's front end feels like, you know. So you you're, you're need four wheel drive la, to kind of uh, even out that. Uh, kind even of out the weight distribution one, thing, but uh, also I found that I think in the Polestar and in, in the Tesla, having the front motor the re- the Pull, region that yeah. it that it provides mm. you know because on on the front axle you're pushing the car backwards when you're slowing down mm. and you got the rear axle also pulling the car mm. to slow down that does something to the dynamics that makes it feel very very balanced and very Stable. willing to rotate around its, its midpoint mm. like right at the center of the car so mm. the handling balance is so neutral and you can get like your micro like just like tiny four wheel slides mm. but still within lane and your car the nose always feels like it's very willing to be go into the corner okay. whereas with the i4 uh, it's maybe a bit mid engine rear engine so you're kind of always not entirely sure how much steering to input uh, to get the nose online sometimes you're a bit uh, too uh, too too far into the apex sometimes it's under steering a bit out mm. And also because of that weight distribution, when you go over big bumps, mm-hmm. it the front to rear, um, uh, it kind of pogos a bit at the front, mm-hmm. very, very slightly, but it's enough to be a bit noticeable and disconcerting if you go over big bumps. And you the, see, the thing is, if, if that kind of characteristic were in the M car, right, even though it's not perfect or may give you a... Uh, uh, the fastest lap time, let's mm. say, or whatever, the, the most efficient way around a, a lap, right? At least that would kind of endow it with some character that you okay. have to fight. In right. a way that makes some of the older Porsche 911s charming. They mm. have that, that little bit of bob and a corkscrew action and you yeah. feel the front lightening up and yeah. all that. I mean, that's not makes for a perfect handling car but it adds that character and a bit of difference and a good driver learns to work around or drive around that thing or learns okay the, this car does this on the limit so you know this is how I drive yep. it and gives you something to work on talk about finesse this one it just feels very in it I mm. agree the, the, the all wheel drive thing and the M50 feels you know makes the car stable and you know, no complaints mm. I cannot say it handles badly mm. or poorly mm-hmm. but the steering did not give me enough feedback to inspire confidence mm. it just felt very inert mm. thing, right? so it just feels like a very point and shoot kind of a car you just aim it where you want it put your foot down and then it just gets you there sure it's efficient and sure it's fast mm. but I can't say that oh, I, I, I want to get up early on Sunday mornings to drive oh, yeah. it. Kind of, then, and that's what an M car should be. Yeah. I right. felt, surprisingly, so, I felt that with the Polestar. It's like, okay. it's, it's, uh, I drove you it down. You look forward to the next drive. You I did look forward to the drive. Yeah. And it, completely, it caught me completely off guard. Mm. You, you that was not what you were expecting in an EV. Because right. Polestar is not a very performance it's not a, well, okay, it's a new brand, yeah, but basically it's Volvo. Volvo yeah. doesn't have a history of making great handling cars. I mean, you could argue that Polestar came from racing heritage. It, it did, but this but this generation, this iteration of yeah, Polestar yeah, yeah. isn't yeah, the Polestar yeah, from yeah, the yeah, racing yeah, team. Yeah. Right. It's, it's, a, a, it's the like yeah. uh, The racing team now is now Cyan Racing. Mm. So that's... You know, Cyan Racing. Cyan. Cyan. Oh, C-Y-A-N. Uh, I thought Cyan Racing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that can be a, a local that's racing cool. name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Idea. Mm. Uh, so, yeah. So, but, but how well it handled and, you know, the, you know, the, I, I thought I'll bring back the front axle 
big regen. I think it's probably there's some there's some kind of torque vectoring function that it uh that it or some kind of torque vectoring effect that it that it provides. It just made the handling like not only secure and confident inspiring, but actually fun because you know adjustable it was very adjustable okay. for what it was. So I mean but at the end of the day the i4 is an i4 M50 mm. right it's not an i4 M yep. so as an MPA yeah. I think it I mean I think Kobe has like you give it a pass yeah Okay. I wouldn't say I'll give it a pass. Right. To me, I'm okay with the MPA. Like, mm. I'm okay with the X3. I mean, yes, SUV, yeah. X3, M40. I actually like the iX3 because I, I didn't come into it with I mean, any X3. expectations of fun to drive. I, I X3. I'm talking about the X3 M40i. Mm. X3. No, not talking okay, about the okay, X3. Okay, yeah. okay. Carry yeah. on. Which so, I didn't like. Anyway, but um, <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, so that's the thing. I think that car, those cars are good. Yeah. But um, I think if it's an i4M, then I would agree to be more harsher on it. But yeah. I think, I mean, I'm not trying to say I am sportive of BMW. Mm. I don't really care. But I think it's the fact that it's called an i4 M50. And I think in all this marketing language, because he has an M50 as an M, and it says the first M EV, yeah. you know, because they're trying to streamline the M and the MP. Yeah, and M4 today is the, I mean, this year is the 50th anniversary yeah, of M. Na, 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 na. Yeah, so I mean, if you're saying these kind of things about how it handles and all that, yes, a M40i usually doesn't do as well as an M car. Confirm. Right? So, um, but you can't, but all those M MPAs, right? You know where they're at. And yeah. yeah. So I think with the M50, the iPhone M50, they the world oversold it a bit. Yeah, yeah, which really, it. like, I think destroyed everyone. Yeah. 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 So, but, uh, so then would you have the iPhone M50 or the M440 Grand Coupe? Oh yeah, because that is, oh, that is the M440. M440 anyway. Uh, yeah. mm, I don't know, man. It's it's tough. M440, uh, it's, depends. Yeah. As price much wise, as price wise, I would probably take the if let's say one is cheaper than the other, then I'll yeah, go for the cheaper the, one. The 10k difference, uh. Yeah, it's 10k difference. 10k difference. That means the M440i is more expensive. Yeah, yeah. So I'll take the i4 hmm. M50. Two. Yeah, I mean, I'm okay with a car which shoots zero to hundred. You know, mm. you feel like crap, but I'm okay. I'm okay with this kind. Of, I I do understand its purpose, mm. and at the end of the day, if I wanted a fun car, yeah, yeah something I, else. I, personally, I feel like the i4 is because it's based on the four series platform. Mm-hmm. Just swapping out the the drive train. The drive train, I think, is not enough to make it make me want an EV. Yeah. Uh, and clear, I mean, I, I think it's quite clear the trend so far, right? All, all the really good EVs are the ones which are on bespoke platforms, yeah. not just platforms that are. Yep. So you have like three tiers, right? So at the top, you have uh, cars like the, like the Tesla, like the Polestar and the Taycan, where mm-hmm. these are bespoke platforms. Mm-hmm. Then at the bottom, you have cars which are like hastily converted from the Kona. not uh, not EV platforms. So that would be the GLC and- Adapted. No. Yeah, 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 and the mini electric. And then yeah, you have electric, those in the yeah. middle, like the i4, which is, yeah, the platform can accommodate both and they did design- to accommodate EV yeah. drivetrain, but it's not uh, optimized for it. I mean, that's why, you know, if money no object and I had to pick a BMW EV, mm. um, I'd go for the iX. Mm. The iX3. No. Oh, iX. IX. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Because it's it just sits on its own. It's yeah. A, it's a bespoke thing. And it's mm. a lovely lovely looking car. I've seen it on the road a few, a few times. Yeah, lovely yeah. looking car. It's fantastic. I think it's... You like it? The outside? Yeah. I like oh. the inside. The inside I, I, I feel like it's I, like, I mean, I, it's I nice lounge the, and all that. Yeah, yeah. I, I like the, in, the interior. But what, the oh. crystal stuff are inside? Yeah, but no, not, not, the, not the front. That's what, not I the outside. Think it, I, I think mean, it's I, quite a good looking car. To be fair, I think the front is... It's quite colour sensitive. Yes, you have to be correct. very careful about how you yeah. you spec it, what color you choose it. And the yeah. I think the colors on that car also are quite special. So and the interior, yes, of course. Mm. Yeah. And the interior is something that you can see from the outside. It's almost like they made yeah. a bit of effort to make mm. sure that people who walk past it, drive past it, can see how it looks inside. Mm. And yeah, it's a. I think it's quite a very different approach to other BMWs that are currently in the range. Mm. Um, yeah, I think it, I think it's quite a good looking car, man. Yeah, I have yeah. for you. Different, Very but different man. Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna get another drink. <laughs> well, and <laughs> let me save you the 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 trouble. Uh, the trouble, Idris. We're about one and a half hours in. Mm. I think that's uh, long enough. For, that's all the time we have. Right. Certainly, all the time I have. <laughs> so until next week, until the next episode. Mm. Uh, 
tune in to podcast. And this is has been me, Sheldon Trollope, and with Jonathan Lim, Idris Stalip, and Sean Du. Bye. 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 Auto app. It's a one-stop app that takes care of all your car needs. You just download the app, pick a service you want, and it's done. Don't just fix it. Auto app it.